Oh, I had a thought <laughs> process. So uh, okay. I'm definitely not as in shape as I was in college. And so I'm going to come up with like a new shirt brand, right? And it's for like guys who like peaked already. And then like they kind of worked out, right? So then like their arms are still somewhat sized, but not as much. And then they're kind of chubby. So you oversize the chest portion, right? So that way like uh -huh. it fits and you can't see like bitch tits. And then like the arms, you tighten that shit up. So that way like it fits the arm nice and... <laughs> So this is your new clothing company? Yeah, this, this is going to be my, yeah, yeah. For gym bros past their prime. <laughs> <laughs> so what, so G, G, B, P, P, is that, is that literally what you're going to name it? No, no. <laughs> but I, I, not, not a bad idea though. Cause yeah. I do feel like guys who either work out or don't work out have trouble finding clothes that fit them. Well. Yeah. And then when you know. you're like, you know, past your prime, you, you, you can't wear like the tight you're shirts anymore. You're not past your prime, okay? <laughs> I feel like with guys at any age, you could, you know, just literally jump back in it 60 days and you guys are good. Yeah, the problem is the 60 days. <laughs> <laughs> well, less video games. And yeah. You know, just got to trade it in. The winter's coming. The winter's coming. I, I have That's this great true. habit of, like, not getting in good shape for, like, the entire summer until, like, August. And then, like, doing pretty good in, like, September. And then, like, keep going. And then, and then it's October. winter time. And exactly. you can't and then, it Yeah. And then, and then it's just, like, all right. And then uh, I, like, burn out in, like, February, March-ish. And then, like, spring break comes around and whatever. And I'm uh -huh. back to being just not in shape. So it's, it's you know, it's a very good it's system good. that I have. You don't, you don't even have a baby like Pat to have an excuse come on come on <laughs> you have the entry of milo i don't know if you see him he's i do yeah yeah he's gonna lick and clean his feet he likes to preen himself he's uh sounds princess. good that, yeah. that's doing what dogs do best yeah yeah we we got a lightly slate late start just because he he decided that he was going to start licking my hand and whining at the door um oh, it's usually I like a, this day. yeah it's like a morning and like a late afternoon one like walk and he just decided he wasn't gonna poop this morning and so oh yeah. so he needed it the late afternoon yeah. yeah he just decided to fuck me over <laughs> no big deal no big deal um yeah yeah so i started the record when we started talking about video games so we're like okay <laughs> <laughs> so I, good. I, i'll decide whether or not to keep it uh okay. after but i just figured you know whatever um okay yeah so i guess uh tell people a little about yourself in terms of uh i guess just yeah whatever you want to share <laughs> well i don't this is always like the hardest question you know mm -hmm. during any interview tell me a little bit about yourself <laughs> um well my name is stephanie we i met dan savage back at <laughs> buffalo we'll go back to the first time <laughs> that we what? met <laughs> A little bit later, but we did meet in college when he didn't even go to school with us. Um, was always born and raised in New York and uh, three years ago now decided to make a move, took a leap of faith to Austin. Um, and I'm here now uh, as a pharmacist. Free Rogan. What? <laughs> what? Free Rogan. Yes. Yes. I was here before Joe Rog Rogan was. <laughs> no, but... Um, yeah, it's awesome. It's growing, but it's also kind of sad because the more people I talk to here that have been here, even mm -hmm. like friends I've met along the way, they're starting to be like, I'm done with Austin and they're moving out. Where so are they going? I went with my massage therapist mm -hmm. um, this morning and he is really liking Arizona. So mm -hmm. I think Arizona still has houses that are affordable, especially for, you know, people our age yeah. um, and less uh, traffic and all that. Because I do find that a lot of people in Austin, at least the ones who have been here, you know, really enjoyed the fact that there was minimal traffic, you had space, and now it's becoming uh, more congested, a lot of traffic, mm -hmm. and that's driving a lot of people out. Mm -hmm. And so, like, are you just doing, are you doing, like, retail pharmacy now, or what are you doing? Yeah, I'm in an independent, we're a closed door pharmacy, but I mainly also work with a doctor mm -hmm. here and we take care of his Medicare patients. So I, I'm almost, I call myself like a health coach mm -hmm. for his Medicare patients because we try to give them a call every month just to make sure that, you know, they're on the right medications, mm -hmm. making sure that 
in between their visits, especially with the doctors, that they're doing okay.、Mm. Um, so half of my job is independent pharmacy, and then half of my job is more like clinical and staying on top of patients.、Mm. So now,、uh, like, what <laughs> what pushed you to pharmacy? Because I I am constantly like a ama- like the the workload that you guys went through through college, and then even like so like post college for like a lot of them.、Um, yeah. Was just incredible, and it's、uh, a very—I don't know. I feel like it's like a very like thankless job, you know. Like not not a lot of people like give emphasis to you know the quote unquote like pill counters or you know you know、yeah. like it's it's not as well respected as it should be, especially from like the effort put in for school. Yes, I agree, and I think that it wasn't always like this. I want to—I feel like it wasn't always like this.、Mm. Um, a few like you know. I, I would say, like ten, fifteen years ago, pharmacists were definitely a little bit more respected.、Mm-hmm. I would say,、um, in a way. So let's just say how I got into it. I think the main driver of how I got into it was, frankly, was getting into UB、mm. and UB being very reputable for their pharmacy program.、Mm. Um, I decided if I'm going to go, I kind of. Have a background in pharmacy with、uh, growing up with one. My dad、uh, used to own a pharmacy,、mm-hmm. so it was familiar to me, and that's kind of how I got through it.、Um, and I love the course through、mm-hmm. it all. I'm a very science and math person, so it wasn't hard for me to get through the schooling aspect.、Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, present day, I feel like insurance programs and PBMs.、Um, What's a PBM? Really <laughs> Sorry, it's、What's、a it? pharmacy benefits manager. So,、okay. it's I don't really understand all like the web of connections between like insurance programs and PBMs, but they are.、Um, I'm not the right person to ask about this,、mm-hmm. to be completely honest.、Um, but I think we have started to see a decline in pharmacy. Role and、um, independent pharmacies, especially because big insurance companies are kind of monopolizing the、mm-hmm. industry.、Um, you understand how crazy healthcare and how expensive everything is now. Yeah.、Um, and I think what a lot of people, a lot of patients, don't realize is that. Just because a medication is, if you have to pay like three hundred dollars for it, like let's say insulin, you don't have it, it's costing the pharmacy like two hundred fifty or two hundred ninety dollars to buy. So、mm-hmm. if you think about it,、um, we're really not the ones making the profit, and、mm-hmm. I think. That's a huge misconception that the public has that like pharmacies make so much money because they know that the drug prices are so high. Yeah. But we don't control the drug prices, and it costs us just as much to buy the drug、mm. to give t- to the patients. Yeah, and then you guys also have to be like stocking it. Like I, I have psoriasis, and I forget. I think it's Zithronol. It's like a seventeen hundred dollar medication or something like that. Yeah.、Um, mm-hmm. And so, like the, the the pharmacist is like, you you're gonna buy this one, right? Like the last time you didn't come in and pick it up, and I'm not trying to do this. And I'm like, oh, uh, uh,、yeah. I just forgot. Like you know, I, I had to, you know, whatever. And、um, yeah, so so like a lot of people don't take into consideration, you know, like almost like a shoe store or similar. You have to actually、yes. pay to have the, everything in stock beforehand before you make, you know, the ten dollars on the insulin and stuff like that. Yes, I so appreciate you saying that because I think it's it's a huge thing that people don't consider.、Mm. Um, and if you're in one of the chain pharmacies like CVS or Walgreens, sometimes、um, even the pharmacists on that end don't know the price of some of the medications. From what I was told, I don't know、mm. like because I've never worked in a chain before. But、um, yeah, I think that's a misconception. And then. Of course, we get all the heat when we don't have the medication、mm-hmm. in stock. Like, let's say you, you know, really needed your next dose、mm-hmm. tomorrow, but you never called the pharmacy to say like, "Hey, I need this," and we don't have it on our shelf because it is so expensive.、Mm-hmm. Then, again, it's our fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely live in like a society where a lot of people just don't take their own responsibility. Like, it's like. 
you know, this isn't your first time, you know, trying to get a prescription filled. So, you know, yeah. just certain drugs aren't going to be held on hand. Um, right. I think I, it was like July 4th weekend in like 2016, because that's when I started like with the current job and I stepped on a needle on the beach. And so like, it was just like the little insulin cap. Right. And so it was just like the cap and then like the actual insert needle and me being nervous. I was like, all right, like, let me try and do like the HIV protocol or whatever. And dude, they couldn't get anything in stock for like two weeks. And like, I understand like them not having it, but it was just like, yeah. oh, we lost one of the packages. And like, you're already on two of the pills, so you should be good. And like, <laughs> like she was like, yeah, this won't really make much of a difference. And I'm like, ah, uh, OK, <laughs> like, then why do I have a prescription for the third one? Yeah. Like, I'm sitting there like panicking, like, all right, like I'm taking down horse pills and like, you know, feeling yeah. like crap. And, and you're only giving me two out of the three. <laughs> yeah. So whatever. Luckily, you know, HIV, Aladine, right? Um, yes. <laughs> So, like, as far as, like, the schooling goes, though, like, you, you guys were, I mean, from junior year on, so it's like, you guys did, like, the six-year program, which is, like, accelerated. I don't even think UB really does that anymore, right? I don't know. I would, because, I yeah, actually, I really don't know. I would mm -hmm. assume that they still have it, mm -hmm. but generally, pharmacy is a four-year, um, mm -hmm. you know, post, I guess, postgraduate degree. Mm -hmm. It's four years. So half of our class did go through the accelerated program mm. um, that was six years total. And then a lot like half the other half of the class already had degrees. Mm. So had four years of education and then came back for four years mm. um, to finish the, the doctorate degree. Yeah. Like that was I mean, you as soon as like junior year hit, like junior year for you guys, like wasn't too, too bad. But like senior year, I feel like I like saw you guys like two or three times like a semester max and it was just yeah. like it was like all right like you know <laughs> we finished midterms and then we finished finals and that was like literally when i would see you guys oh um, yeah <laughs> but i mean you were busy as well no no not not <laughs> nearly to the same degree like i used oh, to come yeah. home from college and like tell my parents like how well i did in like intramurals and and stuff like that and my parents are like why are we paying for school if all you do is go to the gym and play sports and i was like I do school too. Like yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> the highlight of your education is intramurals. Come on. Yes. Yes. That, that, that makes it. <laughs> see, that was where I peaked. That, that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, I times. mean, we went to, so like, well, that was like post-grad when I went to like New Orleans with you guys and like Pat and like a bunch of other people had like the postdoc, whatever, like, I guess yeah, technically still postdoc residency. Yep. And like, I just remember going out, hanging out in New Orleans very late, like three, four o'clock in the morning and just being comatose until like two o'clock the next day because of like hurricanes, which is like yeah. the drink down in New Orleans with like the sugar content and just being super hungover. And Sarif and Pat and, and everybody else, Ben, had to do presentations at like six o'clock in the morning. And oh they just like rallied. I mean, I think you were up too. I, I came I came to consciousness with Sarif kicking down the door. Wake up, bitch. And just like... <laughs> <laughs> having to like restart and just feeling like crap and they, they've slept two hours done presentations and been real people and i basically Such just <laughs> good times i do remember that oh man college were the best days yeah it's an easier time it was definitely it, it was For a sure. simpler time <laughs> yeah so you uh how are you liking texas overall i mean obviously you would have came back and uh not purchased the house that you're in right now if you were <laughs> not having well you still have to come visit i think yes. you would enjoy it thoroughly yes if covid um, didn't happen i would have made a visit right yeah now. yeah i honestly that's a whole different you know conversation mm -hmm. but overall i would say that in austin it is a younger community mm -hmm. from even from like talking to people i i personally don't know anybody who has had a serious serious case of covid so mm -hmm. knock on wood even um family from back home everyone mm -hmm. who did was like a more, a more mild case um mm -hmm. So the COVID situation here is like, I think it's steady, but I, I love it. Like it is November out and it is 79 degrees right now. It's 72 so, here. Not that, oh, not really? that that's, so, that's not normal. That we'll, yeah. we'll be fully so honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the sun's out. It's nice. So, um, it was, that's one huge aspect that I love about it. I love that. 
I mean, I live in like the city city, so it's a little different from where where you live. Like breezy, mm-hmm. you still had um, you could like go on walks down this uh, yeah. around your block and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But we definitely have more space here, which I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm jealous of the space aspect, especially with Milo because he's um, he, he's going. <laughs> Are to... you? Is it just you and um, Jessica right yeah. now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we actually have like a decent sized apartment. Like so pre covid most christmases and like some thanksgivings we would have people over and like we actually got milo uh two years ago when we first moved in had 30 people over and milo sat we you can't see the floor but so there's like a little spot on the floor and he curled up on like the rug and just sat there the entire time basically this is is milo 100 percent of the time he's just like (laughs) semi-conscious um if i walk by him he'll kind of give me like a little bit of a look and if i walk in the kitchen or if i open like a bag then he'll come running because yeah he'll get some food same but same with my pup yeah yeah so we've had like 30 people over so like the apartment is like sizable the issue is it's just like actual personal space with like green areas and stuff like that like i don't mm-hmm. have a backyard there's no park attached to like the apartment building and so it's um i don't know i mean it, it leaves want right but yeah. i just uh long island's kind of out of the question because of uh I think global warming would not be good for that. I don't want to deal with Hurricane Sandy if <laughs> yeah. that comes again. And then, uh, I don't know. I don't want to move upstate. So it, it, I'm thinking what just What about please. out of New York? <laughs> I, so Pat have has. You can have, yeah, I'm sure Pat <laughs> has, you know, asked you about that. And yeah. he's kind of had his pitch on the reasons why. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I'd probably be uh, happier longer term somewhere else. But the issue is just, you know, it's job security. So, you know, I, I was doing digital advertising, and so, like, that's great. I actually, I, I haven't checked in with people since uh, the middle of COVID in New York City, where, like, everybody was working from home. And obviously, yeah. like, ad spend had, like, dropped drastically during that time frame. Uh, but mm-hmm. nobody that I knew actually had gotten laid off yet. So, that's I, awesome. yeah, like, it's great for them. But then, like, now, I I don't know what any kind of, like, economic recession is going to really look like. So, it, it I would guess that this is kind of just going to be, like, a, a slight blip, hopefully. I, I'm not a betting man, so I well, I Are am a betting man. But I have no going idea. Going <laughs> back into um, digital advertising, mm. would you go back into it? I don't know. I, it's a, no, probably not. Like I, it's, it's a great job. It's just it, it's kind of like fraught with like headaches of dealing with clients and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. The money is fantastic. You know, like we, I, I went from you know. 35,000 to turning down 85,000 three years later, you know, so it's it's not, you know, obviously like a ton of money, but for like somebody coming in new as like a graduate, it's definitely like a career path that, you know, if you can oh, put in the hour. Sure. Yeah. I mean, nobody's going to be upset making 85 grand. In yeah, especially in especially with with um, the fact that our whole like everything is going digital Mm -hmm. you know so that like opportunity for growth and Mm -hmm. going above that would be a lot yeah i i think not not that this is likely but i I feel like i i should have well i didn't have my head screwed on too tight for freshman year of college so uh i failed stats and anatomy and that was when (laughs) i was trying to do nursing and um it was it was 8 a.m i can't see you as a nurse let's be no no, would I, you would you go back to nursing? Is that what you're saying? Like you would? Th- that's a surgeon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I don't know. I I mean, I feel like I I could handle it, but I guess maybe not. <laughs> if you don't think so. I mean, I just maybe. So, are you saying that if you were to do it again, you would finish up nursing? I would have hoped to be able okay. to finish it. I I don't know if 18 year old me would be able to finish nursing school. If I'm completely honest. Um, yeah. I've, I've matured a smidge, a smidge. I'm not very much more <laughs> mature, but definitely like a little bit. I don't know. I mean, it, it's really just the, the job security is kind of, is kind of terrifying. You know, like I, I have, you know, family members and I have like some of my dad's friends and some of my yeah. dad's friends were like accountants. And then like, like, like I know other people who are like money managers and like losing your job, like 40, 45, 50, 55, you know, That's like scary. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you can make so much money and so long as you save for like rainy days, that's great. But you know, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the mentality of, Hey, I haven't been laid off in 20 years. Of course I'm not going to get laid off. And then, you know, okay, the well, <laughs> well, here's a, here's a question. Is there ever such thing as job security? Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I like, like I, okay. 
For example, we mm -hmm. talked about before how grueling the school mm -hmm. schooling can be for pharmacy students. There mm -hmm. are so many pharmacists out there without a job. Yeah. Just saying. So is there ever such thing as job security? Well, I mean, it, no, no, definitely not, <laughs> right? Um, but I mean, at, at the same time, like, it, I guess it really depends on like what kind of uh, algorithms come out and, and, you know, how simple like how much they can simplify the job, like in terms of your aspect. But then at the same mm -hmm. time, like competency, I, I personally believe that like competency is really going to, like if you can, if you make yourself irreplaceable, then like they can't replace you, they can't get rid of you, you know? And right. so like, if you're doing enough tasks and jobs, then like, you know, you're not just the pharmacist, you're also the person holding like, you know, the glue together for you, mm. like, you know, in like a small business kind of setting um, yes. where, you know, like for me with like digital advertising, you know, you try and say yes to as many things as possible, without you know killing yourself essentially um yeah and so you know i was still learning but at the same time like you know if you can kind of run the show and do the presentations and stuff i'm i i i think my strongest gift is not being able to shut up so uh i was good at doing presentations and stuff like that and so i actually had like clients who thought that i was like the manager on the account and the actual manager was like my underling and it was like uh -huh. i was like oh well that's impressive <laughs> yeah so, I mean, I think that if you can kind of like take on enough responsibility, then you can make yourself more irreplaceable. But, you know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. there's always going to I mean, there could be a COVID type event, right? Like a black swan event that you can't foresee. There's always yeah. that possibility. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I just think with like business, you get tied into too much of like the ebb and flow with with like the economy where like if you're more in like healthcare, unless they come up with something that like literally becomes, you know, AI pharmacist, you're really mm -hmm. not going to get replaced you know and then right. i know from talking with like pat that like you know buffalo is what like 12th in the nation for a pharmacy school they're i don't i don't know about that high but they're definitely top 50 mm -hmm. i would say in the nation yeah so i mean like yeah. you like i i remember talking to him and just like i i actually know people who went to st john's as well and mm -hmm. both groups of people from buffalo and st john's agree that like a lot of the competency that's coming out of some of like the newer programs and just like yeah. other schools is just not quite the same. So if you're going to okay. not have as grueling of a degree, like, yeah, okay, you pass the test, but if you can't do the job and you give somebody the wrong medication, then you're useless. Right. Right. So a hundred percent. Yeah. I think Pat said that, uh, like they actually like make mixtures together, like in, uh -huh. like with his job and somebody gave somebody went to give somebody like a thousand times, like basically just like missed the decimal point. And like oh almost gave gosh. somebody like a thousand times like the dose and then he was just like dude like check that like what the fuck yeah are you doing? um you know so you, you can't you can't fix stupid right like you yeah. can't fix like, unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> i don't know unfortunately I, I think i mean as far as like nursing goes i guess it's arguable whether or not i could do it but it's just more of um you like, think like there's always a need for it yes yes mm -hmm. i mean there's always going to be somebody shitting their pants i, I mean like Jeff is that is what big. you want to do for the rest of your life? <laughs> Clean it up shit, pretty much. <laughs> you I've... set yourself up for that one, though. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, like, I, I always felt like maybe it's just me, but, like, I, I always hated working for, like, other people. So, but, yeah. you know, it, it's hard to be ballsy enough to, like, start your own business. So yeah. it, it's one of those things where... Ooh, this is a juicy topic. <laughs> like, I, I just, I feel like it's it's so hard to start your own business and, like, take that kind of, like, leap. And so... You know, there's some smaller business that you could do and stuff like that. So, like, I've had my share of ideas. My dad is a, uh, a realist slash pessimist. And he said to me that anything that you've thought of, somebody's already thought of, too. <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> but you can always do it better. It's not the mm -hmm. fact that somebody has done it before. It's your job to do it better. Yeah, yeah. I actually, yeah. I had a, a shirt of, uh, I wanted to do Kuji, which... Have you ever seen like Biggie Smalls? He wore like the Kuji design. Kuji is like a brand. It's like that uh, sweater pattern. No? So, okay. Not, <laughs> it, not it. Um, but so Kuji is like a design that's like synonymous with like Biggie. And so he wore this like sweater and like the sweater is like super multi-patterned. And so I wanted to make like a, a Brooklyn shirt. And this was like in the middle of COVID. And I don't know, for me, like growing up in New York City and stuff, it like COVID like hurt because like the city was just like I felt like the city was kind of bleeding you know yeah and so I wanted to do like as Brooklyn hmm? yeah as a whole the city was hurting yeah yeah um you know just ambulances nonstop and like the numbers like yeah. you know whatever um and so I wanted to make like a shirt that said like Brooklyn across it and then um I forget like what the what the design actually ended up having um it was it was like 
I don't have the design in front of me. It, it was basically going to be like a fundraiser t-shirt. Um, and like, I was just going to like literally just take the proceeds and try and like donate to like inner city kids. Um, and just like, you know, they, they kind of like really lack a lot of opportunity. And so it was just one of those things where like, if you can make a selfless product and luckily like not do it as like a full-time job, you can scale yeah. that much better. You know, like if you're selling oh, yeah. millions of shirts, right? Like, like I've started reselling shit. And so, you know, Supreme sells like this, uh, Murakami logo, which is like a Japanese designer. They make $40 on the shirt. The shirt resold in the middle of COVID for $600 a shirt, like at a minimum. And it's like, clearly you have a market for $600 shirts or even $200 shirts. So when you right. sell it for $40, like, even though I would have loved to be able to resell it and I wasn't able to get any, it's like, well, why are you taking your fundraiser shirt and making $40 when you can like literally like 10 X that and then some, and like all that money could have went instead of somebody's pocket or stock X or fees or tax straight to, you know, actual COVID victims. And so it was just kind of like a crazy thing where it's like, you know, yeah, they make limited stuff, but it wasn't that limited. Like, and so to, you know, give basically, you know, $550 to other people instead of COVID that that's yeah. crazy to me. Um, it's so much money left on the table that clearly you had a market for those kinds of t-shirts. Right. So I don't know. It, it was, it was basically like something to the extent of like, you know, Brooklyn stay love or I, I forget. I, it's not uh -huh. stay low. I, I, I can't think of it. Um, but yeah, it, so it what happened. Why, <laughs> why didn't you follow through it? So I, I was trying to make it for like the summertime and then summertime came and I reached out to my friend is actually like a firefighter and they make memorial t-shirts and they, so firefighters actually fundraise every single time somebody passes away, like regardless of like on the job or off the job, like retiree, whatever. Um, they, they like truly take that like brotherhood to like another level. So every mm -hmm. time somebody passes away, they do like a fundraiser t-shirt and the funeral has like everybody who's available has to go to the actual funeral. Like, mm -hmm. uh, Joe, you, you met Joe, him and his wife got married. He had two guys who were firefighters on the morning of his wedding. They just didn't tell him disappeared for like three hours and went to this guy's funeral because he died from like 9-11 sickness. And they were like, dude, like oh, we, wow. ha we have to go. Like, there's no excuse, right? Like it doesn't matter wedding yeah. party. It doesn't ma matter anything like that. Like, it's like, we have to go. Um, and so they basically, I reached out to this company yeah. and they, they didn't end up getting back to me. And so I reached out to the second one they haven't gotten back to me. And so I have to find like a third company. It just kind of like fell to the wayside with, uh, just motivation, you know, like I, I moved yeah. on to trying to do the podcast, but, um, yeah, yeah. Um, what businesses have you wanted to start? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. So I going back to pharmacy, even though I like went through the schooling and everything, um, another misconception that people have about pharmacists is that we're like drug pushers, you know, mm -hmm. pill counters, drug pushers, you know, mm -hmm. I've heard it all. But for me, I think it was more instead of pushing or um, going the drug route, which is in my opinion is a more like reactive way of treatment mm -hmm. i was i'm definitely way more interested in preventative care mm -hmm. so i actually am a certified uh personal trainer as well mm -hmm. when i moved to austin i decided to pursue that as well as nutrition because i really believe that you know to like health starts with what you're putting in your mouth and your lifestyle mm -hmm. um so I've definitely tried to do the health coach route on my own. Mm. Um, I think it's, I think it's just hard because I've tried to do it and I've seen so many people successfully do it because you see there are so many like online coaches nowadays mm. and a lot of people are doing really well, mm. but I don't know if like not everyone has that like entrepreneur you know, not everyone can be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, is what I'm saying. And maybe I just don't have it in me mm -hmm. um, to do it. But that's that's always been something that I've wanted to pursue and kept in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. So yeah. not that it was more product based like your idea. But for me, it was more service based. Yeah, I mean, like I feel like it's 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 hard to organically grow like especially from like social media and like that kind yeah. of standpoint and, but at the same time like you you definitely don't know what that person's like sales actually looks like at the same yeah. time so you know they could have like you know fifteen thousand followers on instagram but 
you know, I know a girl from college and all of a sudden this girl had 90,000 followers and you go through like the list of names and it's like, you don't have any, like these aren't real people. And then like, you know, she'd make a post and she'd get 200 likes. And it's like, how do you have 90,000 yeah. followers and getting 200 likes? You know, like, yeah. um, do you, do you follow the guy Max? Uh, I'm going to butcher his last name. Luga Very, um, something to that extent. Luga Very, no. no. I um, have to look him up. Yeah, he he make like I mean, he might pay people to do it, but he has like really nice graphics and stuff like that, and like he's a lot more of like a realist, you know. A, a lot of people, as far as like nutrition, are uh, very much purist, you know. And and yeah. from like a monetary standpoint or like an access standpoint, you know, when when you work or like live in in not as nice of an area, right? Like they call it like food deserts and stuff like that, where like mm-hmm. you know it's just processed foods and it's hard to get you know anything like really healthy let alone organic right and Mm -hmm. so like when people are sitting there and they're like purists of you know organic only like this guy is basically saying like yeah okay like organic grass-fed is like really good but at the same time like not eating sugar is also really good you know and so like you know those yeah like realistic alternatives is at the same time like a good kind of like middle ground but i I feel like if if you build it they will come kind of thing where like if you have you know a hundred or a thousand posts you know like Mm -hmm. as you kind of scale that up and then as you start working with people as you start having success stories and stuff like that like organic is good because people can tell that it's real you know like when you have people who that's true yeah well i mean you might not have like the entrepreneur sense but if you're just you know putting out content people will come for the content you know like so long as they're learning something you just have to i mean i i've seen a lot of them and then you know people try and like ride the coattails of somebody else we're like oh i made it blue instead of it just being white and yeah this is my new product like if, if you just kind of do your own thing at the same time because not i don't know i don't think a lot of them do it from like a fitness standpoint too you know like mm-hmm. you obviously have a lot more fitness education than most people who are just like a nutritionist or you know an ig right. thought. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you. And I get it. There are there is a lot of like bad information out there, like mm-hmm. a lot of scams as well that yeah. people fall for. So you really do have to be careful. But um, I, I still like even on my page, I try to just like stay true to what I believe in mm-hmm. and, you know, do everything that I actually talk about, not just post to get a following. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's going to have to, I I don't know, like, I, I haven't done, like, enough with, like, social media to know, like, how to grow, like, a following. Like, the, mm-hmm. like, even, like, the hashtags, like, it, it always annoyed me when somebody would try and take their page into uh, IG influencer status, and it's like, I got to take a picture here, and I got to take a picture there, and, like, yeah. you know, here's my 40 it's a fucking full-time hashtags. job. But are it you having a fun? full-time job. Like, some people are. Ah, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, I, I've seen, and I've hung out with people who, like, try and live like the influencer life like which is a subgroup from like trying to you know have like a business right like obviously they they are their own business but at the same time like i've been there and i've like i've seen people pretending to have fun where it's like oh my god everybody okay we're gonna go one two three yay one two three (laughs) yay and then it's like you know like okay are are you fucking having fun like what the fuck is this like it's such like an interesting time of people faking everything uh i, I don't it's know scary though like that's <laughs> literally and i think what's scarier is that like the next generation is gonna be all they know yes yes uh that was actually so i was talking about it with a guy on like the last podcast about shoe reselling and stuff like that and i'm very impressed with how many kids are getting into shoe reselling because me as a kid like my dad told me to sell seashells that i painted <laughs> like a dollar a piece like that was going to be impactful. Go, go have a lemonade stand yes savage. <laughs> yes yes but like you know these kids are like hustling and and you know you can make 10 20 dollars a shoe which is you know it's lunch money for like an adult but as a kid like you're rich and yeah. then like you know if you make bigger flips then whatever but um it was just like it was one of those things where we were trying to figure out like why and i think it's because kids are seeing you know these people who are like botters that are like famous and like that and then they're seeing the people who are like creating the bots and like you see like the wealth, right? And so you want the wealth. So like, you know, it's kind of like an easy route, but at the same time, like that's one of the pros, but at the same time, like the cons is like, fuck, if I don't have, you know, material things then I'm not anything, right? Yeah. Um, Like I I can't imagine this next generation not being more materialistic, which, you know, could be good from like a driven standpoint. And depressed. Yes. A lot of 
a lot of depression. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, suicide rates are on the rise with like kids yeah. and stuff like that. Depression rates are on the rise with kids. It, it's I, I mean, social media is definitely not good. I don't, I don't think you should. I don't know how I'm going to raise kids. Luckily, I do not have kids right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've made it to almost 30. <laughs> you are way closer to almost 30. Um, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I am still 28. Um, <laughs> but, oh, man. But, yeah. Um, it, and so, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's just like, I, I can't, I don't know when I would give a kid, like, a real phone where, like, it has Instagram and stuff like that, but it can't be good for them. You know, like it can't. No, it no. can. No. And it's, but like at the same time, I think it's also going to be very hard um, because we say, we, we'll say it now, like, I'll, I, like, I don't think I'm going to give my kid a phone until mm. they're like teenagers or whatever. But like when they go to school, everyone else is going to have the latest phone and gadget out there. Yeah. And are you going to be that parent to be like, here's your flip phone? Remember yeah. when we used to have flip phones? <laughs> I, had a flip phone. I had a flip phone until post-college. post, post college. <laughs> So <laughs> I was that one guy. Yeah. Like, my, like people are always like, you know, telling stories about whatever, like Tinder and everything like that. I'm like, I didn't have fucking Tinder. They're like, why did you have Tinder? Oh, I was like, I didn't have, so I had a flip phone. you did not have Tinder. <laughs> Imagine was... Savage with Tinder in college. It's okay. It's, it's okay. It's not good. <laughs> whatever yeah i'm not even going down that road <laughs> um yeah i i mean yeah same thing i mean literally the same thing you know like you 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 go through elementary school and stuff like that or middle school and you have like a flip phone and like social media fucks you up and then you know like in terms of like dating and stuff like that like luckily i i've basically just completely missed all of like the dating apps and so it is what it is but and you found like, Jessica. Yes, Look at that. Yes. You don't need a dating app. No. You're your real life example. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You don't need a dating app, people. I just feel like it, it's hard. Like, I see people who are, like, trying to get on, like, dating apps where, like, you know, they're, they're, they break up or whatever. Or they've just always been on dating apps. And, like, people are just like, this is nice. But this is nice. And then, like, you're sitting there and, like, not committing to a relationship. And then, like, you have two or three people, male or female, in front of you, whatever you're interested in. And then... You know, there's always that what if of like, what if the other guy's better? You know, like I kind of like blue eyes, you know, and like it's kind of like it feels like people are, are you know, when you create a character in like it's a game. very interesting. I've never thought about it like that. I, I, yeah, I mean, I just <laughs> I feel like people are sitting there. The, the what if factor on top of who else they're talking to, you know, like. So you think it, there's too many options when it's online yeah. dating? Yeah, I mean, like, I think people just kind of, you know, did you ever see the gadget? It was like. A rubber thumb and it spins and you just put your phone underneath it yeah. and then it just spins and swipes yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, so like like i'm not it, seeing that but it, it's, it's just like a, i mean it's like a little bullshit gadget but it, it's it's one of those things where it's like you know if you have 20 like whatever 20 matches why am i going to settle for the number one like like then you then you sit there and you're like all right well friday's coming up who am i going on a date with well you know what that one has brown hair so i only want the blonde one so now five girls and then it's like you know what i want the one with brown eyes instead of the blue eyes and then you know uh -huh. and and then you just nitpick and then you actually meet them and they suck right <laughs> well do you so i guess that goes back to the intention of why you have a dating app to begin with yeah right? like if you're really in there trying to find your match then you know maybe you're more inclined to I mean, of course, then there are guys out there who are just in there, too. There's women, too. <laughs> I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. But, no, you're absolutely right. It's it's just tough. Yeah. I I'm glad not to have to go through the uh, the social media dating phase. Because that's basically yeah. what it is. Um, well, yeah. Because it's hard. Like, how, how else do you really meet people nowadays? Even friendships. It's hard. You know, it's either when you're an adult, it's very rare that you find that you can find like a good friend that you guys just click with that's not um, getting replaced that's not getting replaced <laughs> <laughs> yes yes yeah yeah i mean i i definitely think there's that um i've always had pretty good luck with just not shutting up and then like people pay attention because they have nothing else that they can do um that doesn't work for everybody <laughs> um but how, but do, does that actually turn into a friendship or is that more oh, like no. a, this, this, you know, gets me through the situation? This guy's talking at me. Well, I, <laughs> I you know, I, I don't know. I, I always, every time I go on vacation, like, like I've had like 
Jess and like other people always joke around like you always make random friends and like then it's like awkward because then like you talk to a guy for like an hour and then every time you see him on like vacation you have to say hello because you just like whatever but yeah yeah um but i just i don't know i i find it interesting to talk to people right like regardless i mean that's part of why i'm doing like the podcast but you know there's always regardless of who the person is they're always there's always something interesting about most people Right. Some people. Suck. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Some people are going to. Oh, suck. that's so nice. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I have gained a soul. Oh, you have gained a soul. <laughs> no, this, that is. I, and I think that's one thing that's so great about podcasts, because you can talk to people from like all different walks of life, you know? Mm. Yeah, I think I, like I think it's nice to have like depth to conversation. Oh, yeah. 100 percent. Now, so you're. What is your dad up to now? So your dad, like... My dad is retired. He everything. Is, he's not doing he, anything. No, he's not, not doing anything. I think he just has a hard time letting go mm-hmm. as well. He mm-hmm. is retired um, in 2020 over the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was still working throughout COVID. And I don't think it was until August that he finally signed over the pharmacy mm-hmm. to um, the pharmacist who wanted to buy it from him. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, it's, in Brooklyn. it's in Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. Eighth Ave. We were the, <laughs> we were the OG pharmacy there. Nice. The OG. Nice. Yeah. Um, but he is playing a lot of golf from what I hear mm. and just chilling. I yeah. think he wants to come visit Austin too and see Texas, but, yeah. uh, that fear of flying, is still there for people. Yeah. Well, I saw I saw in your story you had like a like a shout out right that like American Airlines was putting people in three three to a row right was that that, that was you yeah 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 we flew we flew to Colorado in June face masked up um, had some people in the airport not wear face masks toddlers no yeah. face mask like zero face mask not even like fully on just what, like no. I don't I don't I have nothing just <laughs> running around like a two year old like he can't spread germs um, but we flew Southwest and and I believe that was actually like just two people so like. That's a phenomenal yeah. way to fly. Like if, yeah. if we could just keep that and like not have to deal with anybody else on like a flight, I, I like yeah. that. <laughs> how many how many airlines are gonna go bankrupt because of that? Uh, you know? yeah. I mean, you know, uh I, you know, similar things to what millennials were told is, you know, stop buying iPhones and, and you'd be able to save and afford true. a house, right? And that is very um, true. You know, the the issue with I mean, I, I'm a firm believer of let the businesses sort itself out. And yeah. well, why don't any of the airlines who had record numbers for the past decade have any cash on hand? Yeah, and, that is oh, true. Oh, we were buying back shares. Well, how does that do when the share tanks because of COVID nineteen? Oh, well, we lost a lot of money. Oh, okay, so you don't have any money? No. Oh, okay, so then you, you might go bankrupt. Like that's that's just how this works, you know? Like yeah. you, you fucked up. You wanted to make money for your CEOs and like not invest or put together a rainy day fund. I'm told yeah. to make a rainy day fund. You have a rainy. You know what I mean? And, and it's so true. And like, You're we're just right. going to bail them out. And so, you know, now we're coming out of COVID. Maybe like, well, okay, not coming out of COVID. Yeah, 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 not coming so, out of COVID. Yes. Well, hopefully we're coming out of COVID soon, but people are flying more. People are doing more than, you know, yeah. peak COVID. And so, you know, it's it's one of those things where if the business is viable, somebody will buy up the parts, right? Like right. You, you can sell off the business. And so, you know what? Maybe, you know, maybe Amazon, you know, has Amazon Airways and Apple sets up. Apple Airways. Oh my gosh. And what, Isn't what, that scary? Because they probably have the cash to do it too. I, yeah, I mean, you know, Bezos himself probably has the cash to do it himself. He could probably yeah. buy Austin for credit. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. That I, I've had this I conversation. Hear, yeah. He he's basically like a, a like a demigod. Like, yeah. When you have, I, I know the counter argument is that he doesn't actually have any cash and it's stocks and stuff like uh-huh. that. But like, let's just go from His like a cash worth. value. Yeah. Yeah. You have whatever insane amounts of money you can essentially buy most like you know second tier towns maybe not austin maybe not chicago (laughs) definitely not new york city but like you know you know say i don't know san antonio he just decides to buy san antonio that's that's on the table for him like he might be able to do that like that's insane yeah yeah especially you know i'm not doing great (laughs) <laughs> like, <I'm, laughs> you want to give some out yeah. just stipend funds from Bezos? <laughs> yeah yeah uh, whatever uh i don't know um so but you so you, with your dad so he stopped everything else because your dad was doing dragon boating which is like uh chinese rowing and then he was yes. also doing um wasn't he importing wine 
He is. I don't know about the wine. I'm sure he still has some. I don't think he could fully like not do anything. Mm. He definitely like still had buildings in Brooklyn or, you know, like property in yeah. Brooklyn. Um, last I heard, I don't know. Like he always is onto something. So he's mm. not completely hands off, but he is retired from the pharmacy. Yeah. Um, I think he still goes and hangs lends out. a hand and hangs out just because it's so part of his life. You know, it's hard mm. to let go. Yeah. Well, like I baby. can't see you fully. Like, would you fully retire? No, I'm just, I, I'm right. Like you you'll always find something, something to do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like sure. whatever, whatever ends up being interesting. Maybe I get back yeah. into shape. We can blame that. I, I'm not retired, so that's why I'm not in shape. At 65? Oh, yeah. Because you're too busy. Just yes. too busy. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm hoping to not have to work until my 60s. Uh, the yeah. hope would be, even when I was working like like digital advertising, like I was making less money. And so I never ended up making 85000 I just had the job offer before I ended up like, leaving that. Um, but you know, if you really max your like 401k and stuff like that, you know, like you can't beat compound interest. Like obviously you can, you know, hit the lotto if you're blessed or you can do really well in the stock market through like private means, but you know, like the tax mm -hmm. deferred, you know, compensation with like a 401k, if you really max that, like so long, well, maybe not a 401k because you can't touch that until 60, 67, I, I forget. 66. 60, yeah, something like that. So uh, omit that. But from, from like a strong saving standpoint, like, you know, I would have hoped to be able to retire in like my like, late 40s early 50s okay. i did not have i hated working <laughs> like yeah. i uh was ex way more frugal than i am now um uh -huh. and i've realized that the best bet is not to try and scrounge and like scrimp every dollar but that you also have to increase your income and so that's where like you can only save so much money you know like if somebody's yeah. making thirty thousand dollars like well how much money can you possibly save you know like yeah. your maximum efficiency so you know you have to make more money and so that's kind of more where i'm trying like what i'm trying to do now and so um at the time i was trying to be like super frugal max 401k do stocks otherwise and then be able yeah. to retire but i yeah i'd always like to do something yeah i think that's a huge thing that people especially people our age has to because like we were never taught personal finance nobody's taught personal yeah. finance oh <laughs> you know, know like, like i don't well, even I mean, I, yeah like yeah no i totally agree with you so i don't even think important. now and yeah. like if it weren't for jason like thank goodness for jason jason's my fiance mm -hmm. um if it weren't for him i would not know like where to put my money and i mm -hmm. think it's so so important mm -hmm. um especially for people our age because we're definitely spending more um mm. and not saving as much as we should be mm. but you know there's also there is another route where you make your money work for you mm. you just have to learn how yeah I, I guess um but you're right like 401k like any opportunity you have to kind of save and have that money compound that's that's the way to go yeah yeah no i i like so He's an accountant. Does he work for a big one of the big four? I forget. No, he he's an accountant, but he does not do taxes. Okay. He do, um he does uh auditing, so yeah. security auditing. Okay. Um, but he is that's his thing. He like loves to geek out and nerd out with personal <laughs> finances. Um, but it works because he he loves to calculate like our net worth and seeing that grow from like a quarterly basis and that's the thing but yeah. i i look at it and i'm like if it weren't for him showing me that you can make your money grow without just your income like you mm. mentioned you have to have an income to make more money but like yes you can have your income and then there are other ways to make that grow you know outside of just what you're making mm -hmm. Yeah. um versus i feel like a lot of people our age it's just whatever they have in their savings account and their bank account and that's like what they're worth yeah yeah you know yeah I, I went down like the rabbit hole when i was like working in manhattan of uh fire which is financial independent uh financial independence retire early and it's essentially uh -huh. like the the bare basic math is essentially like your total savings you can assume like a four percent withdrawal rate right because on average over like a 20 year period 
the stock market will return 7%. So if you're only withdrawing four, you're not like losing money, but then right. you're also accounting for kind of like pullbacks and stuff like that. And so like, essentially it's people kind of like fight their way down to the bottom in terms of like, how cheaply can I live? And then mm -hmm. figure out like, okay, I need $30,000 to live. So then, you know, $30,000 is 4% of what, right? And so like, yeah. that's how much money they would need to retire. And so I was trying to do that route, but I don't, not that I believe fully in like consumerism, but to always have to worry about your nest egg and to always have to just be like bare basic living. Like, I also don't think that's fun. Like, I don't no, need to have absolutely. a Maserati. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Like yeah. that we would never trade in. Like we, it's great to save. It's very important to save so that, you know, potentially we can retire early mm. or um, if somebody like if one of us loses our job we will still be okay mm -hmm. um but at the same time we would never trade in experiences like yeah. traveling is our thing and mm -hmm. we would we would still shell out and do the um you know travel and not be frugal about everything because mm -hmm. we think living in the moment is just as important yeah yeah i mean life is the experience that you make in it you know, like exactly. It, yeah, I don't. I don't want to sit in fucking New York City all the time. <laughs> I know. I'm waiting. It's the only place everyone's going to Mexico. So yeah, yeah, but <laughs> it's the so only place that would take us. I I had a friend go to Mexico from work, and he goes, "Yeah, bro, there's no fucking mask. It's great." And I'm just like, "Oh my god!" Like, I, like yeah, I, I'd ra I'd rather just wear the mask like a little bit, you know, like yeah, <laughs> like whatever. Um. I, I don't know. I like he's kind of like a nut job. He he's going to Vegas in two weeks because Vegas is starting to open, and he's he went to he went oh to Vegas God. like before Vegas shut down it, during COVID. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. why are you going to Vegas? Like, just because it was the only place that was open. Yes, yes. basically, yeah. yeah. So a little bit of a nut job. Where did you where did you guys travel last? Oh, don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. Our last travel, it wasn't in, our last international travel was Croatia, which mm. was uh, September of last year. Mm. And then, but our most recent trip was January to Hawaii. Nice. And that was, uh, that's where we got engaged. But Congrats. That was, <laughs> thank you. That, that was a year ago. So that was our last trip, mm -hmm. basically. Do you guys have anything planned upcoming? No, we don't. We're <laughs> we're looking. We're considering different options, mm -hmm. um, but but nothing set yet. And yeah. I think just because of COVID, we don't know what's going to go on. A lot of countries. I think I heard that the UK is on lockdown mm -hmm. yeah. again. So a lot of places won't even let us in. Yeah. Um, and even when we get there i guess they're like needing us to quarantine and stuff so mm -hmm. it makes planning difficult so we might just do like hawaii again or like a domestic trip mm -hmm. yeah we are planning to go to denver though if you guys want to make a trip and then the trip to denver what are you guys doing there uh we're going end of january i'm gonna be there in the middle of january <laughs> really <laughs> yeah wait which week um it's going to be the 12th to the 19th um okay. i believe off the top of my head uh we're going to i forget but we're gonna go ski snowboard with uh val and breckenridge okay yeah with who patty oh <laughs> is gina going yeah yeah okay so if you guys want to come baby? yeah and baby and baby <laughs> i can't believe pat has a kid uh I, Have you, is, is he cute yes yeah yeah she's adorable she's adorable i mean she's she's very happy uh she has a strong grip Gina has like, you know, a ton of research in terms of like, I don't know, I, I don't know shit about babies, but you know, she like props her up on like her stomach and then like off of Gina's stomach. And then that way, like it works on like her feet strength and her hand strength because she'll kind of like push herself up off of her. Um, oh, okay. And that yeah. also kind of forces her to like lift her neck and stuff. So it starts building yeah. up like those neck muscles. But she like, they have four dogs, so now you have five children, basically. I know. Um, and the dogs, like, they're adore like the baby. They're, like, four huge dogs, too. <clears throat> yes. They're not even small dogs. No, no. Batman is, like, 80 pounds. Nala yeah. is, like, 65 Holy pounds. Crap. So that's, like, a husky and then a husky German Shepherd. And then Robin is, like, a res dog, like, from, like, the Indian Reservation. And that's probably, uh -huh. like, 40, 50 pounds. Probably, like, 50 pounds. I think they're all larger than Milo's. Milo's 45. Um, Insane. And then 
hey they they have the space for it so. uh it's still hectic yeah. like I mean, oh, they have yeah. the space for it but like yeah. you come in and it's pandemonium like the dogs are it's just it's a line going this way and then it's a line yeah. going that way and like you know you open up the door to go out like back and you know don't don't be both because i remember i think I, when i last talked to him he said that like she gets maternity leave and then does he get like paternity leave too or i'm not sure i'm not sure the exact okay. benefit she definitely has maternity leave i mean yeah. the, the u.s has terrible fucking maternity leave it's like insane yeah like i i, I think that it's like a state i think state. hers was pretty good yeah. compared to the rest of the u.s yeah yeah I'm it's not. more generally speaking the u.s i think hers was like pretty decent my cousin is a court officer and they'll give you full pay for six months or she's done she had back-to-back -back kids like years um and so she did half pay for the whole year and so they okay. allow you to do that um and so she works with like the courts that's like another great job i mean like a lot of the city jobs are fantastic but you know i mean yeah. think about it like you get to fully stay home for your kid for like the year you know like court officers don't make an absolute ton of money but at the same time like you know now you can instead of hiring somebody to raise your kid actually raise your kid yourself which is also pretty nice um yeah. and you just take half pay so if you can monetarily afford it you know that's not like a bad way to do it another crazy statistic or not like statistic but another crazy thing that i heard is that like i think average daycare mm. is like thirty thousand dollars for so if so if you're in you know if you're a couple and if one partner doesn't even cover like if their salary doesn't even cover daycare mm -hmm. like you might as well just stay home because yeah. that balance is is that insane yeah i mean it, it's definitely crazy i mean jess is i mean i don't know what i mean you guys don't really what would be your guys's game plan in terms of kids like would how would you guys try and do it uh, I'm not working once I have kids. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> <laughs> I would also like to not work once I have kids. Right. I, I am down. Well, I'm sure is Jessica down with that? You never know. Stay I'm home down to on. retire. I am down. <laughs> I am ready. I will do things. I will be fit. Jess, if you're watching, <laughs> I will get fit for you and the baby if we have kids. <laughs> you, well, first of all, have that serious conversation. With... Probably having kids. Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, but the other thing is, in my current position, I don't even think I have, like, maternity leave just mm -hmm. because we are such a small company. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like when the time comes, I probably wouldn't be working for at least the beginning of it. And mm -hmm. then afterwards, um, I think I would still want to do part time. Like, I don't mm -hmm. I want to do so I want to do something unless like. It really is. I'm sure it is a full time job, honestly. Mm. But if I don't have anyone to take care of my kid, I'd rather not put them in daycare mm. unless we had like a grandparent to come yeah. stay with us, you know? Yeah. I think Jess was saying, like, you know, for her, like, her grandparents basically raised her. So, it, like, yeah. with, like, Asian families, like, they for tend sure. to be a lot more it's interconnected always, yeah. and stuff like that, where my grandparents yeah. are down in Florida. My parents are, my dad just retired this year, too, actually um uh -huh. and so congratulations my, yeah <laughs> 36 <laughs> years <laughs> as an auto mechanic so uh he he's retired and my mom is like a school secretary so she's you know in the process of like finishing up like her last year um yeah. and so i think they're just kind of traveling like yeah unless i like don't want to see the kid for like months on end i don't think my parents are going to be viable so she's like oh yeah my yeah. parents will do it i'm like like all right like i mean whatever i i just you know whatever like i have no issue with it but it's it's it wasn't mentally on the table for me you know like it wasn't right. even like a debate because that's just not how i was raised and it's not how anything that i've experienced happened but for right. like asian families you guys are so much typically more like interconnected with, with that aspect yeah like it's always your grandparents duties and yeah. it, it makes a huge difference um when i first moved to austin and i was like figuring myself out dude it was like the hardest six to eight months of my life yeah. Um, trying to figure out like what the heck I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. But I worked um, part time at a daycare center. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I have all these like different jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but one of my jobs was at a daycare center. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I did realize or notice is that like the amount of germs that gets passed around yes. <laughs> that quickly, it's, you know, it, it, it is really hard 
like, obviously when you don't have a choice and you have to put your kid through daycare, but that mm. is a factor, you know, to think about yeah. um, just how easy germs get transmitted. <laughs> yeah, especially in COVID land. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, so, so like in terms of your, your business, like I, I remember from you, like whatever, in terms of like IG page and stuff like that and, and the wellness aspect, have you thought about doing things that are, use alternative food sources from like a baking standpoint? Cause like, I remember you wanting to make like a bakery. Um, and so you remember my friend, Jason Lee. Um, yes. So his sister, I don't remember the IG page, but she has uh, a bakery that uses ube, which is uh -huh. like a uh, purple sweet potato, basically yeah. in terms of a very large boil down, but it's yeah. like essentially purple sweet potato. And then my brother's girlfriend actually makes um, cookies and she uses pumpkin puree. And uh -huh. so it might be, no, it might be sweet potato. I forget. I think it's pumpkin. I think it's pumpkin. Um, but whatever. Sorry. They're, they're very good. But in terms of like the baking and like the alternatives, right? Instead of like, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna lie. I've never made cookies. So instead of uh, cookie dough, <laughs> uh, whatever goes into it. <laughs> well, cookie dough. It's also butter and flour and sugar. I've only done the cookie dough one. Um, I didn't realize. I didn't know that. You don't know what you don't know. Um <laughs> But you know, That's like funny. you, you could think from like a like a baking standpoint, like the like I'm I'm assuming right, like the glycemic index, the sugar content, the oh, calorie content sure. is gonna be like yeah. way better. And like the ube, like they weren't able to get like ube in the middle of COVID and stuff. Like they they were like kind of doing like pickups and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so Jason's sister actually like had to make like other stuff instead of like the ube stuff. Um, but it's like really big like Filipinos, and I kind mm -hmm. of feel like anything that blows up, like your your cousins made ten below. Yeah, yeah, the ice cream shop. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, like the Thai rolled ice cream like blew up here. And like, I feel like other cities are similar. But at the same time, like if it does well in New York City or like California, then like the middle yeah. cities of like Colorado or Texas or whatever could also yeah. work there. And so it's yeah. definitely something to like, I, I don't know, I feel Think like, about. yeah, business wise. Oh, for sure. It's always like what's trendy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then like you the argument could also be like it's 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 a wave it's always like mm -hmm. trendy and then it dies off kind of yeah. thing so um but you're absolutely right like i i love to cook and mm -hmm. i just don't think i spend enough time in the kitchen as mm -hmm. well but i i always just like to learn mm -hmm. so maybe i'll experiment more and i'll get back to you on that and see what we could come out with yeah, sure. I mean, like the I haven't I, I've tried the ube and I've tried the pumpkin and like they're definitely really good. The pumpkin cookies automatically come out soft. I don't like burnt yeah. chocolate chip cookies. That's always like a pet peeve. I don't want to eat yeah. like a hockey puck. Like the chewy ones. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and like the ube is like nice and sweet, so it's it's like a nice alternative. I don't know. Yeah. Something to think about. Uh, so you are also a figure competitor, right? Bikini, bikini, bikini. competitor. I I was and I did it for two years mm -hmm. and I took a break. Um, I took a break from it, but now I am jumping back on the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's just a very, very taxing sport mm -hmm. mentally and physically. And if you don't, if you're not doing it for like the right reasons and if you don't love the sport enough, then it's not for you, you know, like just because it's like any sport, you have to really love it to be good at it. Mm. Um, so I had to take some time off of it because it was taxing. But now I feel like I'm in a good place and we're going to we're going to give it a go again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how, how'd you like I remember when you were starting to like get into it and then you're like, yeah, you should try. And I was like, I'm not getting that fucking big. <laughs> like that's not happening. <laughs> um, like obviously it's, it's a little different for like bikini than like men. I uh -huh. I don't think. I think with like men uh, insertions in terms of like genetics and stuff like that, like some guys just have like great genetics for, you know, like their back insertions and stuff like that. I do not have like lats. I have like little chicken wings that are like. Well, well that's why you got to work on it. And I think that's the like it really depends on it's, it's totally preference, you know, mm -hmm. the way you decide to work out. But if you talk to like bodybuilders and their workout regimens compared to somebody who just does like power lifting it's completely different there's um i really do respect bodybuilders especially guys you know when they literally look at their body as like 
a figurine mm -hmm. or a sculpture. Mm -hmm. And if they see that, you know, my shoulders need development, they will, you know, work on the muscles mm -hmm. that target the shoulders to like make it bigger. And then um, like lats and stuff like that same way. So mm -hmm. it's, I don't knock yourself for genetics <laughs> is kind of where I'm going at because mm. everyone, if you've seen these guys and if you look at their before pictures and mm. what they are now, yes, it's going to take time, but you know, if you started when we first <laughs> talked about it, you would have been there by now. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I'm too built. I'm built like a T-Rex. I'm built like a T-Rex. <laughs> that's what, that's what I got told when I did the, um, oh man. Did I ever send you the video of me doing stand up with um the Kill Tony podcast? I'll have to send it to you. Yeah, I, I you do. Yeah, I, I did it. It was like a minute. It wasn't very funny, but they like roasted me and they were like, they, he looks like a stretched out little person. And like, <laughs> I'm just so much more like lower body. And then like they were talking about my ass the whole time. And so apparently I have a nice butt still, but I am just a very short torso. <laughs> hey, you could still, if bodybuilding is not your thing, you were great at like the Spartan races and everything, you know, so that could be your thing. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, whatever, whatever gets you active, right? I just don't want to be right. that fuck. <laughs> like, exactly. I mean, I, yeah, I agree. It's not even about being like fat or what, you know, what mm. you look like, but Exercise, I think it's so important for mental health, mm. for just part of your daily uh, lifestyle, you know? Yeah, I, I, I operate in like a mixture. It's definitely good from that. Um, I've had like a good time with like, you know, self-hatred, like not wanting to be where I'm at, you know, like mm -hmm. I like for me at least like that. That's like a good motivator. Like everybody's going to have like whatever gets them into the gym. Yeah. For me, like not looking like shit, in my opinion. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. 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 Well, cause it's like a confidence thing too. Like you want to, you have to feel good mm -hmm. to, I don't know, like just for your mood in general. Yeah. 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 I think, and, and like the other thing is like, whatever gets you active, right? Like you don't have to like weight lift or whatever. Um, you remember David Lee? Yes. Yes. So, so David is like, David is a ground person. Okay. Like David is not like built to fly. David is not built to like, he he's, He's built to like wrestle. Like he's just like a very like strong dude, right? Okay. And and my friends got him a rock climbing membership. And I'm like, he's not gonna have a good time with this. Like he's not like like it, it's it's such like a learning curve. And like he, we should have gotten him like a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu membership or something. This is obviously pre COVID. But like huh. rock like he never used the rock climbing membership. And I'm like, right. there's certain things that like you know. I'm not built to play basketball. I'm five foot nine. Like I'm not beating LeBron James. Like I, it's just not happening. That's like, okay. Yeah. You can yeah. still have fun with it. it ex that's the, that's the mixture. But yeah. you know, if you're, if like, if, if every time I played basketball, I played against LeBron James, I wouldn't have a good time with it, you know? And like when every time like David has to fight against gravity and like, you know, not have like the reach and you know, like stuff like that. And like, yeah, even through college with me lifting a lot, I could never out wrestle that kid. So like yeah. he always had like he didn't always want to wrestle me. Sometimes you know you just wait. So it. did did he actually go to rock climbing and he not enjoy it or he never he didn't end up going. You know like oh, like so I don't yeah. think I I would guess that if he really enjoyed it he would go right like right. like that's kind of like the I guess ipso facto argument. And so like yeah. you know if you're having a blast with something you go do it. Like obviously right. time constraints and stuff like that. But you know it's it's kind of like more of a a mixture. Um, mm -hmm. For for you with like the the bodybuilding and or bikini, sorry. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, okay. Yeah. Um. So then, like for you with like the bikini, like what what like how did you get started? Like where like how was like you know actually doing it? And I guess like what are you trying to set up to get back into it? Yes, I I so I did my very first show like all on my own. Mm -hmm. I think it was when. Like when we went to UB, like we would try to go to the gym together. Mm -hmm. I remember, right? Mm -hmm. um, it was always like I liked feeling strong in the gym and lifting weights. I used to be that, you know, what every girl was, that cardio bunny where mm -hmm. every, you know, all you thought you had to do was run five miles a day, to stay in shape. So I like went through all that. But then when I started working out with weights was really when I um, – liked getting stronger and mm -hmm. seeing muscles develop first pull up so, what first pull up 
first yes <laughs> i was able to do a pull-up back then um but uh i did my first show myself and then i just started like i met a community of people who did it and they kind of like drove me even more and it was i was never a very good like i'm never very big on sports growing up never um never hand-eye coordination was just not that good but with bodybuilding it was like the one thing in like one physical thing at least in my life that i was so disciplined and driven to do it really takes like a certain kind of person to do a show in my opinion because like the dedication it takes um the hard work when you're tired that like physical you still have to push through it um so i love that feeling and then like when you step on stage it's like showcasing it all you know like all your hard work yeah um so when i took a break it was like a, like i said it was much needed i needed a little bit more flexibility because for two years i was literally living on like a regimen like i had to go to the gym i had to do my cardio these were the meals that i was eating yeah so i had a much uh i had my break and then now i along the way i think personal life as well i lost that drive mm-hmm. that i had when i did when I did competing Mm. and in a way I think I'm like searching for it again um Mm. to kind of set that motivation and fire under my ass again Mm -hmm. and it's always been something that I I love doing Mm. so we're gonna give it another go we'll see what happens nice nice what what do you think is like the like I guess hurdle like be it like a, a body part that you know like you were saying, right? Like the one shoulder versus the other shoulder, like, w- yeah. like either that or like, what do you think is like the biggest hurdle, like hopping back into it? Um, I'm starting off at definitely a higher body weight mm. <laughs> because um, that I think that's just going to be the hardest part because before when I was um, doing it, I definitely was at like a lower body weight. I just like had more, uh, I had less weight to lose to kind of like get to the physique that i needed to be to be on stage Mm -hmm. um but again i'm working with like a different coach this Mm -hmm. time he's very knowledgeable um very attentive Mm -hmm. and i think it'll be different so i'm not gonna even though i'm starting off at a higher body weight i feel like my um improvement week to week will be will still be significant so i'm excited to see what happens too nice nice i'm excited too <laughs> yeah is uh is jason or felix gonna hop onto it too or no i know felix is always like felix is trying to get bigger so yeah. that that's his goal yeah. you know every every guy is like i want to get bigger i want more muscles yeah <laughs> so that's what he's in because we have we've been out of the gym all through COVID. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it wasn't it was October I think like pretty much October first that we finally unfroze our membership. Mm. So we've only been at the gym for like a month. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And getting back into it, and it's it's very humbling, you know, not touching weights for. Yeah that many months and then going back and you're almost starting over again but you notice like your body adapting and jumping right back into it so it's, yeah. it's exciting yeah i did i did a body weight exercise when you you said that my younger self would be embarrassed about myself that that helped with the motivation yeah so i did a body weight exercise workout and i did um bulgarian split squats and yes. i'm sitting there at work and i'm like like i'm doing it with body weight so it's like yeah what the fuck is this Dude, my hamstrings were fucking killing me. I was like, for how, wow, yeah, for like I'm, three days. I'm afterwards. like so, like, so out of shape. Like, like, because yeah. uh, I, so like, you know, I, I had actually like hopped back on the train in terms of like lifting and stuff prior to COVID. Like, I, I was going with with Jason to the gym. Uh, we went to Body in Flushing, right? Uh-huh. And so like state of the art setup. You know, like everything that you need, free weights. The machines are great. Uh, they have like a little CrossFit area that people do abs and some other stuff. Yeah. Um, and so, like, we were going, like, three, four days a week. Fantastic. Um, sidebar, Jason started doing yoga. It's for members only. I paid for the day pass. I go into the room, and the lady goes, are you a member? And I was like, yeah, I just didn't sign up. So I lied to her. 
Jason goes, don't worry about it. Just come back in, you know, five minutes in and they're, they'll check people and then you can come in and you'll be okay. Jason texts me going, yeah, come in. They're not going to check. I come in, the door opens, the guy starts checking. So, you know, whatever, there's 19 people on the list. I'm number 20. Flushing happens to be Asian. So, of course, he comes up to the white guy and he goes, <laughs> hey, are you on the list? And I go, yeah. And he goes, what's your name? And I go, Jason. And he goes, you're not Jason. <laughs> and so Jason is whatever in a pose. And he gave me a look and he goes, and he <laughs> talks to this guy. And so he knows who the fuck Jason is like by name. Like he comes in every day and he, the guy goes, hey, Jason. And so I fucking had to leave in the middle of this fucking class because of this That's idiot so funny. it was you, you know, would. it's i didn't want to do it i was like dude this is going to be embarrassing like i don't want to get caught doing this it was top 10 like most horrifying times of my life because it was just like really just 10 <laughs> <laughs> whatever the ones that i remember the ones that yeah. I remember. um but yeah like I, I i so like i actually like had started going back to the gym we're doing good um Jason was trying to do like a nice cut to go to Coachella and look good for himself and, and wifey. And so it was mm -hmm. like he was doing that. And then just shit hit the fan. Coachella got canceled and fucking, you know, haven't been back to the gym since. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go back right now. I, it seems like wave two is coming in terms of New York City. We had like a thousand mm -hmm. new cases yesterday. So I'm, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Is it even though people are getting tested positive, though, are the cases as like serious as they were the first time um I, i'm not really too too sure i i know that like the deaths are not quite as high but then at the same time like it's it's hard to even like talk about ratios or anything like that because the testing is like totally different at this point right yeah so mm -hmm. it, it's like you're almost comparing like apples and oranges so i i don't yeah it's I'm, true i'm not you know equipped to mentally or you know whatever mathematically to figure out like what's actually like dangerous versus less dangerous in terms of time period but right. I don't know if I'm if I want to go back because it's like we didn't have a thousand cases before and now we have a thousand so I can see which direction it's going. So yeah. like I don't want to unfreeze my membership to then, you know, either get sick to freeze again, yeah. or yeah. So I think I'm just going to kind of wait. I'm hoping that a hey, more more body weight Bulgarian split squats. Yes, you yes. Know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe buy some free weights. I've right? have you seen the Maybe at home chef? systems that they've been coming out with? Yes. They have They're like awesome. the resistance bands. Like it's it's yeah. um yeah, like you, you have like the actual full screen in front of you yeah. and the resistance bands come out of you and like adjust you the see, the one that I've been seeing is tonal. Yes. Is it yes. the one you're seeing? Yeah. It's awesome. It yes. looks awesome. It, it's like four thousand dollars, but yeah, it's I mean, you know, my dad always tells me there's nothing money can't buy, but you know, for four thousand yeah. dollars, that's a pretty cool like at home gym hey. if you don't have space. Yeah, exactly. It's like and and you get all your workouts in. It's yeah. you know, it's what if you with money, it's like it's whatever is important to you. Mm. If your health and working out is important to you, you'll make it happen. Same yeah. with Austin when um when we shut down, pretty much every time we walked by people's open garages, like everyone was putting up at home gyms, you uh -huh. know. So and weights weren't coming in cheap no. because people were marking that shit up. Yeah. So yeah. The, you know, uh, it's whatever you think is important. The, the adjustable weight dumbbells were like going for crazy money and pools were going for crazy money like little yeah. like backyard pools they yeah. were like nuts nuts um yeah uh for for you like i guess i know that we had spoken you're a self-proclaimed not expert on covid but i i guess if you take anything that's affected for covid or like what kind of supplements do you take in terms of just like daily health and you know i guess more also like for do you change anything up with like prep yeah. So yes, yeah, for sure. Um, I, some people could argue that the supplement companies are, is just as bad as big pharma because mm -hmm. supplements, you could market, um, all this crap out there as well. And people are buying and it's sometimes a little bit worse because it's not regulated, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but CDC did come out with a list of certain, um, certain, supplements or certain chemicals, I guess, that 
um, are beneficial in boosting the immune system. So mm. COVID wise, it's a virus. There's no like treatment yet that we know of. Mm. Um, but what we do know is that the stronger your immune system is, the better the outcome. Mm -hmm. So vitamin D is definitely one of them. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, this, for, any, for anyone interested, CDC does have a list out. Mm -hmm. um, but I know vitamin D is one thing that repeated, repeatedly people have found when you have um, substantial levels of vitamin D, mm -hmm. you have better outcomes. Another one, surprisingly, is like melatonin. Mm -hmm. um, and we just have to remember that our immune system does start in our gut. Mm -hmm. You know, that's so your gut health is so important, um, making sure that, you know, we're keeping the inflammation down in general, just not eating crappy food, getting enough sleep yeah. for your immune system, um, keeping stress level down. Um, that's going to be kind of like your best friend right now. And so like, what do you, do you take vitamin D or what else do you take? Yes. I take vitamin D. Um, there's like, five things let's see if i can remember the five <laughs> that we are that like it, it won't hurt to mm. take um and of course it's always very important to make sure that the quality is there i know we've talked before and we've talked about a company like thorn yeah great yeah. great products you know um if you're gonna compare a product like thorn from thorn to something like nature made mm. from your local pharmacy um i think that's that's where the problem is, you know, mm -hmm. like you're going to see the benefits from something like from a product from Thorn, but not so much from stuff that you buy mm -hmm. from like a local store. That's like five dollars. Yeah. Um, but so the first one would be like vitamin D. Mm -hmm. I take um, a probiotic fish oil, um, a multivitamin. And I want to say the last one is magnesium, but I'm not positive. Mm -hmm. um, I do know that a lot of people is also a lot of people are um deficient in magnesium mm. but majority of people probably are low in vitamin d mm. um fish oil most people are not eating the recommended amount of fish for yeah. their healthy fats <laughs> uh, vitamin d get that in um but of course vitamin d get tested first for your blood test um and that's another thing when you're going to the doctor's office for lab work generally they will have a really really big range of what is accepted as normal mm -hmm. um take that with a grain of salt with with anything because if you're on the lower end of that normal range that's probably you know you're in the lower range of that normal it doesn't mean that you can't supplement mm -hmm. um because you probably might feel better at a higher range. And everyone is so different mm. that my normal and your no normal could be completely like off from each other. Gotcha. Um, and I guess just like a call out in terms of like the thorn versus other ones, like <laughs> neither of us are paid by thorn, but it's just yeah. uh, the company actually like, show, I, I think they like do independent testing to make sure that, you know, their product is actually just their product. Um, yeah. So like a lot of people in say like the UFC, have popped because of like tainted supplements because they're made in like a lab that doesn't necessarily clean out the vats that are mixing everything. And so yeah. then there's contamination or, you know, some people don't actually make a mistake and they're just putting in some kind of bullshit or filler. So like when yeah. they say this is the dose, that's the dose. And so like, that's why Thorn is, you know, the better product kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I just don't, sure. <laughs> I just don't want people to think it's for nothing. Um, yeah. For... And, and it's going to come with a price. Like, I think mm -hmm. that's what trips people up i yeah. i see people with like the kirkland yeah you know kirkland costco size like yeah. fish oil like i get this whole thing for 20 dollars. well it's like it's probably you know a lot of fillers and everything in there mm. so yeah i think I, I would probably trust like multivitamins i mean you know better than me um i just feel like i mean the same issue right like in terms of tainted supplements but i'm not a performance athlete so um mm -hmm. not really uh so it's um <laughs> You know, if if I happen to, you know, pop for a steroid, you know, like like that's, you know, the big issue in terms of USADA, that doesn't really matter for me. Like I'm not getting drug tested on the regular and right. they're not going to care about that. So it's, um yeah, um, I think I would trust like multivitamins. But yeah, um, you remember, do you remember Jack 3D or Jacked and like Hemo yes. Rage, the pre-workouts? Yeah. Um, like I cannot believe that that like existence happened. 
You know what I mean? Like it's not regulated. Yes. There's, it's crazy. <laughs> like it's just like the Wild West. It's like, oh yeah. yeah so it was like dimethyl. It's I forget what it was. It, it was dimethyl something. Yeah. DMAA was like the ingredient, and I remember like they started banning like jacked, and then like it was just hemo rage, and then you had to try and find it in like C4. And yeah. then, like, I remember Pat telling me Jeff was getting, like, the one with the DMA from underneath the desk in GMC or GMC. Yeah. And it's like, what the, like, but that was like a party drug. And, like, I forget, like, Norway or I forget New Zealand. Like, like it's used as, like, a party drug out there. And it's, like, that yeah. crazy of, like, a stimulant. I remember, like, Hemo Rage, Hemo Rage said one scoop max because it was, like, a big scoop. And Jack 3D said three scoops max, and it was like a little scoop. Oh my gosh! The first time I took Hemo Rage, I went into the gym, and I like I immediately set PRs for like every lift that I was doing, and like that's insane. It, you just like felt like your heart was pumping out of your chest. It's like, oh yeah. okay, because I was basically doing like coke, you know, like that. That's yeah. essentially what was happening. Um, and yeah, do you remember? I don't know if you ever met my roommates in in junior year because you guys were like busy and stuff, but this guy Mike. He ended up getting like erectile dysfunction from jacked. Like it was like, <laughs> like oh my he, gosh. Yeah, and I made that like you know I didn't experience it, and like you know that's obviously like a terrifying it's okay thing. Okay, if you did. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So this actually happened to Mike. Now that you make that call out, um, no, no, but. No. But I've never experienced that. But like, I can imagine that being like, you know, super upsetting. And so I'm joking around with him being like, dude, come on. It's not the Jack. I take the Jack. Like it, it maybe it's just you. Like maybe you got to get your man's check. And dude, he almost like he was yoked. Like he was like very, like he looked like a bodybuilder. Um, yeah. And he, he got very angry. Like I, I almost got murdered that day. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, you don't, you don't mess with guys in manhood yes. come on come well, on now i mean i i didn't know you know like <laughs> I, I never experienced it we were kids like what whatever um yeah it was it was uh <laughs> like i just can't believe that that time frame like actually existed in terms of having those supplements on the market you know like yeah it, yeah um i don't know i i don't do you have anything else you want to talk about um we'll save it for the next time the we'll next save time? it for the next one yeah yeah <laughs> Get ready for football. <laughs> yeah, football's on, but I also have to have my next meal. Yeah. So I'm gonna go cook. Yeah. Are you starting up football. like the diet ready for for like competing and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good yeah. times. Stay tuned, y'all. Stay yeah. tuned. <laughs> we will get you a shout out with the social media and stuff and they can Sounds follow good. the progress. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate it course it was an awesome time but yeah. yeah let me know when we could do this again it was fun yeah